To have you down, Mr. Jan. Sixty summers young, sixty winters old. Come on, Charlie, we want it down. Chunky sheep in hotel. What do you say? Chunky sheep in hotel. You want song about princess Ning Lo Fu? Long the journey, hard the way, but his heart was gay for. Was he not a prince, both strong and brave, vowed a princess fair to save? And he slew the dreadful dragon, even cut off his seven heads. And in his cave he found the princess bound to her lowly bed. Then came they both back to the land of the mighty Emperor Fu Manchu to claim his reward, the dainty hand of lovely Ming Lo Fu. Thank come you on. so much. <laughs> come on, come on, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. Come on. Come on. You conduct mission long here in China? Yes, in the Yangtze Valley. Very interesting. Taking a vacation, eh? Staying in Shanghai long? Uh, a holiday mood like fickle girl. Privileged to change mind. Now then, play fair. This is your first visit to Shanghai in many years, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, most anxious to renew acquaintance with land of honorable ancestors. Ah, <laughs> Well, there he is, Diana. Mr. Charlie Chan. Humbly acknowledged name. I'm Philip Nash, Sir Stanley Woodland's secretary. I'm most happy to make acquaintance. <laughs> this is Sir Stanley's niece, Miss Diana Woodland from Canada. How do you do, Mr. Chan? So pleased. Sir Stanley asked me to apologize for not meeting you himself, but he was detained on business. You will see him, of course, at the banquet tonight. Uh, there is banquet. Oh, why, of course. 
The arrival in Shanghai of so distinguished a visitor can't go unnoticed. <laughs> uh, much uh, flattered by unexpected acknowledgement of humble efforts. <laughs> You'll have to make a speech, you know. Oh, uh, idea of making speech, <laughs> bring goose pimples. <laughs> much scared. <laughs> <laughs> Joy equals astonishment at seeing offspring in Shanghai. Explanation, please. Mom cables you were coming to Shanghai, so the firm sent me here to look into the trade situation. Yes? Selling oil for lamps of China? <laughs> Pocketbook, of course, left in other suit. Believe it or not. Uh, old excuse. Like ancient billy goat has whiskers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me, as president of the Chamber of Commerce, to welcome our illustrious guest, the famous Charlie Chan. Now I have a bit of good news for you. We are not making speeches tonight. <laughs> Just a few words of welcome to Shanghai. I call on Colonel Watkins, our Commissioner of Police. I count myself lucky to have known Charlie Chen for quite a few years. Charlie is a splendid friend, but I'd hate to be his enemy. Yes, to our friendship, Charlie. Where did the Commissioner of Police meet Mr. Chen? Scotland Yard, at the time of Solano Bashwood's murder. I call on Mr. Sun Wong. I made an important discovery this afternoon. That's what prevented me from meeting you. We can get together after this is over. Two ears for every tongue. Sun Sin Sang, Ye Gop Kuk Wai, Kom Yat Nang Kao, Tung Mai Kuk Wai, Sui Chap, Yun Chan. O Ne, Fe Siung Kum Gik, Doji, Doji, Doji. What does all that mean? He said, thank you so much. And now we are fortunate in having with us our old friend, Sir Stanley Woodland who has a few words to say on our behalf. It is a great pleasure to me to perform this friendly ceremony. I am certain I can think of no better words to voice our sentiments, Charlie, than are inscribed on the scroll contained in this jade box, fashioned, who knows, by the hands of your ancestors. May I read it to you? Please. Murderer most ingenious. But the motive, Charlie, the motive. Motive like end of string, tied in many knots. End may be in sight, but hard to unravel. Sustain they had so many friends, but few enemies. Only one enemy necessary to commit murder. Box was in hands of uh, Sir Stanley's secretary? Yes. But he... 
Let's hear what he has to say. Diana, how is she? She's taking it pretty hard. Mm. Uh, that box, Philip. You were looking after it, weren't you? Yes. It was in my room all afternoon. I brought it here myself. You look in box before coming here? When Sir Stanley first gave it to me, I did. It was all right this afternoon. Did not look before starting for banquet? No. Someone could have changed box during afternoon? Well, yes, I suppose it could have been done. Too bad you let it out of your sight. But how could I know anything like this would happen? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, perhaps home better than here for a young lady. Yeah. She'd appreciate it. May I, Colonel Watkins? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Sir Stanley, very good friend. With your permission, would like to help on case. I was hoping you'd say that. My whole department is at your service. For present, would prefer to work alone. Yes, yes, uh, of course, if you wish. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll say good night now. Good night, Charlie. Thank you. Fine fingerprints? Now listen, Pop. If you and Sir Stanley had business together, it's a sense that whoever sent you this note killed him and is after you, too. Very clever deduction. Instincts of detective father inherited by noble offspring. But what's it all about? Talk cannot cook rice. You mean you don't know what it's all about yourself? Silence best answer when uncertain. You go to bed now? All right. But don't say I didn't warn you. Thank you. Distance no hindrance to fond thoughts. Good night. Good night, Pop. Good night. Do not forget your prayers. May need them. Got you. Have idea someone make attack. So come into your room to watch on sofa. So sorry, fall asleep. Hello, hello, police department. Police department. Charlie Chan speaking. Is there anything wrong, Mr. Chan? May tell commissioner that desire of my son to report murder based on hasty conclusion and devotion to father. 
Safe now to sleep. Sleep? Insignificant man has never improved on nature's tonic. But you can't sleep with this sort of thing going on. Contradiction, please. Murderer believed Charlie Chan dead. Second attack, unlikely. Gee, Pop, you gave me the scare of my life. Yes? Wake up, Charlie. Thank you so much. Office. Good morning. Have wished to order breakfast. Room service is busy, Mr. Chan. Will you wait a moment, please? Marloff, something went wrong last night. What do you mean? I'll connect you on this line. Listen carefully. And don't say anything until I speak again. You may have room service now, Mr. Chan. We'll have coffee, rolls, marmalade, and very large omelet. Fuyong. You see? All right. You stay there and keep your eyes open. I'll let you know what to do later. Oh, it's you, Pop. I dreamt that I was facing a firing squad. Dreams like good liars distort facts. One fact very clear. Have much hearty hunger. Now you dress. Okay. Uh, Grand favor, please. Omit song in bathroom. <sighs> Gee, Pop, I sure miss my radio. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. Hurriedly, cold omelet, like fish out of sea, does not improve with age. Where are you going, Pop? To visit very charming young lady. <laughs> you stay here and look after telephone. I will inform my most august lady of your exalted presence. Uh, thank you so much. May your honorable ancestors rest in peace. Good morning, Mr. Chan. Good morning. So sorry to disturb. Have come to offer sympathy. Thank you. I'm trying to help police. Have necessary questions. Perhaps you have answers. Ask anything you wish, please. Sir Stanley appear nervous, as if afraid of attack? Why, well, I... I never thought of it before, but... For the last few weeks, Uncle Stanley has been rather... Oh, how shall I describe it? Rather cautious. Can be more definite? Well, now that I think of it, he never wished to be left alone. Was to have assisted the Honorable Uncle in important matter. You know nature of his business? No. Someone made very certain Sir Stanley did not talk to me. Perhaps the uh, search among uncle's papers disclose important communication for me? Mr. Chan, last night after Philip left me, someone broke into Uncle Stan's library. There were papers all over the floor this morning. May I see, please? Yes, this way. Nothing has been touched? Philip was here for a few moments this morning. Then he called the police and Colonel Watkins said to leave things untouched until he arrived. Young man Philip is here? 
No, he went to the docks to meet Mr. Andrews. From Washington? I believe so. Uncle Stanley was expecting him, I know. You like young men very much? Yes, very much. Most fortunate young man. Uh, if papers found for Mr. Andrews or self will take good care, most important. I will, Mr. Chan. Thank you. So much. Ah, uh, listen, baby. What have I been doing for the last 30 minutes but listen? On the boat, you said you wanted to see me every night. Have you changed your mind? Sure, I want to see you. Do we meet tonight or do we not? I'm trying to tell you that I can't say for certain. You see? Hello? 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 Yes, this is his room, but he's not in. Sure, I'll tell him just as soon as he comes in. I'm in. That was... Uh, Sir Stanley's secretary? Yes. And he said that Mr. Andrews has arrived? How do you do it, Pop? With mirrors? Good for seeing backwards. Well, here's one. Do you know that this Mr. Andrews wants to see you? Well, now that you tell me, I know. Mr. Chen? I'm Charlie Chen. I'm from the Commissioner of Police. He sent this note. You talk to girl on telephone all morning, or many girls? Only one, Pop. I tried to shake her, but I couldn't. We'll wait one moment, please. Certainly, sir. Get the uh, commissioner of police. One five three eight zero. Oh. Operator, get me one five three eight zero. Oh. Say, Pop. You don't think this is phony, do you? Phony? Translate into English, please. You know, is there something fishy about it? Slight odor, perhaps. We'll see. Yes? The old boy is pretty cagey. He's checking up on us. Put him on. Police department. What name, please? Oh, Mr. Chen, just a moment. I'll put you through to his private secretary. Good morning, Mr. Chen. I've been trying to get you for an hour, but the line has been busy. Humbly apologize for telephone flirtation by my son. The commissioner wants you to come at once to the address he has given the chauffeur. He's one of our men. Thank you so much. Where do we go from here? I go, you stay here. And please make note, you pay bill for all female telephone calls. Well, I got here just as soon as I could. You seem to be in an awful rush if you ask me. Hello? Who wants him? This is Colonel Watkins, Commissioner of Police. Oh, good morning, sir. Pop got your note all right. He's on his way to meet you now. On his way to meet me? I never sent him a note. You didn't? Charlie Chan's son said that his father's just left the hotel in answer to a note I'm supposed to have sent him. That's odd, sir. It's more than odd. Send over a couple of men at once. I want an immediate report. Very good, sir. Do you want to buy flour? Thank you. I've got to get a taxi. 
I'm in a hurry. Taxi? Catch that car. Double fare if you make it. Hey, step on it, will you? We've got to catch that car. Hurry! Here, let me drive the thing. Sit down. So much reception, most flattering. Charlie Chan often see enemies in Shadowbox. Now enemies see Charlie Chan. Just a little taste of your own medicine. Medicine very bitter. What are you doing in Shanghai? Think perhaps you have made answer impossible. There's another one, Chief. Lee. Listen, Pop. The commissioner rang up. Let capture be good lesson of virtue of silence. Silence won't help you. You came here to meet Sir Stanley Woodrow. If answer known, questions seem unnecessary. Are you trying to tell me that you don't know why Sir Stanley Woodrow summoned you to Shanghai? Answer to question veiled in death. Yes, Mr. Shan, for you and for your son. Here's the conclusion, like a uh, hind leg of mule, kick backward. What do you mean? If we die, you also die. <laughs> yeah? Have ace in hole. Suggest uh, view through window. Very interesting. Look for beggar. Not very good beggar. But very good detective. Detective? Sure is a detective. A second after you left, the commissioner rang up. And when I told him what had happened, he said to tell a cop to follow us. By now, this whole joint is surrounded by cops. That's right. He did say something to a cop as he came out of the hotel. That is ace in hole. Very proud of athletic offspring. As you say, scram. Then you're certain Sir Stanley left no message for me? None that I know of, Mr. Andrews. Hmm. Have a cigarette. Thank you. Well, make yourself at home, Nash. I'll go freshen up a bit, see if I can get rid of these sea legs. Rough trip. I beg pardon, sir. The laundry on the boat fairly ruined the master's shirt, sir. 
Do you happen to know where I could purchase a new supply? There's a little shop about two blocks down the street. Sulo Gao. Thank you, sir. Apartment. Yes, miss. Name, please. Miss Diana Woodland and Colonel Watkins. Is Mr. Nash with Mr. Andrews? Mr. Nash is in the study, miss. Shall I announce you, miss? All right. Yes. Diana thought we'd find you here, Philip. I found this in Uncle Stanley's desk. Colonel Watkins thought we ought to bring it over. It's addressed to Mr. Andrews. Oh, uh, Mr. Andrews? Miss Woodland. May I extend my deepest sympathy, Miss Woodland? Thank you so much. And this is Colonel Watkins, Commissioner of the Police Department. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Andrews. Thank you, sir. You have something for me? Yes, I found this in my uncle's desk. We thought it might contain information that would throw some light on Sir Stanley's death. Will you pardon me, please? There's nothing in this to help us, Colonel. Pardon me, please. Hello? Yes, have him come up. I hope you won't think me rude, but I have a most important visitor whom I must see immediately. Yes, of course, certainly. Well, we'll see you soon, I hope. Well, no, no, don't go, please. There's a pleasant breeze out on the balcony, and I'll join you shortly for a gin recce. Mm, splendid idea. Eh, hey, Philip? Why, yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes, come in. Uh, dust came from... Visitors. This way, sir. matters of such enormous importance, I don't trust anyone. Most wise. Will you sit down? Thank you. Young Nash tells me that you and Sir Woodland had no opportunity for a private talk. Most unfortunate. You know, of course, why he sent for him. Sir Woodland's letter, very vague. Await explanation, please. Well, as you know, Sir Stanley was a secret agent of the British government. I'm in the same service representing the United States. Cooperating with the, the Opium Committee of the League of Nations and certain officials in the Chinese government, we were planning a campaign to round up a group of smugglers who've been using Shanghai as a clearinghouse for their goods. It's a grave situation, Mr. Chen. The terrific toll of life taken yearly by this insidious traffic is beyond belief. Beauty of poppy conceals sting of death. In more ways than one, I'm afraid. Sir Stanley was murdered because he knew too much. He left report? Apparently not. Oh, uh, I have an important phone call I must make for Mr. Andrew. You won't mind? You go right ahead, my boy. I'll see that she's here when you come back. So without a doubt, it was Sir Stanley's idea that you, knowing the language and the customs of the country, would succeed where we might fail. Confidence most flattering. Not misplaced. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner, please, assisting? No, we thought it best to limit the knowledge of our work to just us three. Kidnap plot, an attempt to kill humble self, indicate that many others share knowledge. They try to kill you, too? Spider does not spin web for single fly. Uh, 
Sir Stanley's secretary now work for you? I think so. Sir Stanley apparently had great confidence in him. He might identify men we seek. No. Sir Stanley confided in no one. I don't know where to begin. Long journey always start with one short step. Are you all right? Yes. No, don't risk it. No, 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 don't be a fool. Quite safe. Did you see anyone in here? Why, no. Are Colonel Watkins and Miss Woodland safe? What's all the excitement? Why, someone shot at Mr. Shan from this room. Charlie, are you hurt? No. I rang up in your son's Please, head. talk later. Did you just come in? Yes, sir. See anyone in the hall? No, sir. And no one in here, either. Except Mr. Nash. He was just coming from the bedroom, I, I think. Oh, he stepped in to make the phone call for you. Phone call? What phone call? Hello, operator. Operator, was any call made from this room during the last ten minutes? Thank you. Well, young man? Charlie, you mind looking in the bedroom? Oh, Philip. What are you looking for in my bags? Search it. Oh, Philip, don't let them. Please, dear. Here. The note to you from Sir Stanley. Well, why should he have taken that? It's of no importance. May I see? Yes. Stand by that door. Yes, sir. Perhaps. Fingerprints? Probably. We'll have them compared at headquarters. Waiting, not necessary. Have uh, powder puff, please? Oh, yes. Observe. Scar on thumb. Hmm. Your right hand, please. That scar settles it. Nash, you're under arrest for attempted murder of Mr. Chan. Philip, we couldn't have done it, Colonel. Please, Diana. You have nothing to say? It's my duty to warn you that anything you may say may be used in evidence against you. You're making a great mistake, Colonel. I'm sorry, Diana, but that's for a jury to decide. He's the only one at the time of the shooting whose movements are not explained. Your man was coming in at that door. He saw no one in the hall. I was on the balcony with Miss Woodland. And you and Mr. Chan were in the study. And you were found near the spot from which the shot was fired. No one could have gone out of that window because it's locked on the inside. And finally, there's an identifying fingerprint found on the butt of this gun. Now, I'd call that a pretty clear case. Wouldn't you, Charlie? Charlie! See who that is. Charlie! Where on earth did you get to? Make most interesting discovery. But, Charlie, the evidence is as clear as the nose on your face. <laughs> Owner of face cannot always see nose. All right. What's the big discovery? Very possible. Someone leave apartment through this window. <laughs> it's fastened on the inside. 
most humble apologies for exhibiting commonplace matters clue. Examine, please. Well, I don't see anything unusual. Notice spot of oil? Yes. Note handle. Maybe it squeaked and someone oiled it. Maybe someone have better reason. We'll demonstrate. Now listen, baby, nothing would please me more than to take you out tonight. But how many more times have I got to tell you that I can't say for certain yet? I'm very sorry, but that's absolutely all I can say. Mr. Chan is nothing for publication. Hello, Pop. Oh, all right. Here's your dime. Cash on the line for one female telephone call. Thank you so much. <sighs> Tired? No. Just had refreshing ride on fire escape. Got a clue, Pop? Uh, shot in dark, sometime find eye of bull. Have read? It sounds reasonable enough. Observe envelope. I don't get it. Unimportant letter in envelope marked important. Get it? I'm sorry, Pop. I missed it. have made important discovery involving one Ivan Marlov. Am closely watched. Use this means for communication as agreed, W. Gee, Pop, you don't think that's the man who kidnapped you? Most elementary conclusion. Well, I'll be... Got something? Something very strange. Mr. Andrews did not think letter important. I get it, and he should have. Because if he and Sir Stanley were working together, he would have known about the invisible writing. <laughs> Most excellent conclusion. Very proud. <laughs> what you going to do now? Ask Mr. Andrews questions. I'm Mr. Andrews. Is Mr. Channing? Come in, please. We've been trying to reach you for the past hour, Mr. Chan, but your line's been busy. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, romantic offspring. Oh, I see. Uh, will you sit down, please? Thanks. Very great honor to receive visit in Humble Hotel. Uh, may I offer refreshment, please? Uh, yes, thanks. Scotch. Soothing drink, uh, like summer shower, bring grateful relief. You're not joining me? Preserve appetite for less potent Chinese tea. <laughs> Cigarette? Thanks. You're very hospitable, Mr. Chen. Not always polite. Hmm? When you walked out on me today, I naturally expected you to return after the others left. So sorry for delay. A very casual letter from Sir Woodland in an envelope marked important. It was not sent to me for nothing, Mr. Chen. And you took it with you. <laughs> Apologies. Very bad habit of collecting clues.
I was right. Must look for man named Marlowe. You brought this up to? Principle of trusting no one. Make me doubt even you. <laughs> so very sorry. Well, in view of what's happened, I can't say that I blame you. But you must understand that I, I couldn't have exposed the, the secret message before the others. Very excellent precaution. This gives us a good lead. We can start work on this at once. Uh, suggest first search kidnap house. May find clue there. You know where they took you? They have very excellent reason to remember. Well, let's go then. I'm going with you, Pop. Contradiction, please. You stay here. And keep away from telephone. Friend Marlow was the man behind the lights. He and his gang left here in a hurry. Smart rats know when to leave ship. Recognize fingerprint with scar? Well, let's see. It's Nash's, all right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you do here? To help you. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know what you and Mr. Andrews might run into, so I came along, just in case. Uh, get idea of disguise from a detective book? Yeah, and it's a pip, too. Mm. May borrow book sometime? Sure. Ah, oh, you're kidding me, Pop. <laughs> On contrary, greatly appreciate, just in case. 
Suggest we now take police into confidence. I think it wise. Any orders, Pop? Four. Return to hotel, burn disguise, study detective book, watch telephone, and uh, take bath. Okay. <laughs> You say you'd recognize these men if you saw them again. Except man behind lights. Recognize accent. What about the switchboard girl at the hotel? Very pretty brunette. Hmm. I suppose you remember her, eh, Johnny? Make very good impression. You're fighting a desperate gang. My department is yours if you need it, you know. Secrecy in our operations is most important, Colonel. Offer greatly appreciated. All right, gentlemen. It's your funeral. I hope not. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Miss Woodland is here, sir. Oh. Ask her to wait. Yes, sir. It's Miss Woodland. She wants to see young Nash. You know, it's difficult to believe that a decent young fellow like Nash would try to murder anyone. You questioned him? Can't get a word. Uh, perhaps young lady can make him talk. If anyone can. Dick in. Yes, sir. Send in Miss Woodland at once. Yes, sir. Colonel, you know very well Philip didn't try to kill Mr. Chan. But, Diana, my dear, the facts are very clear. Mr. Andrews. I'm sorry, Miss Woodland. You believe in him, don't you? Situation for a young man, very bad. But you said someone else used the window. You proved it. Correction, please. Uh, only proved someone could have used. Oh, I thought I understood you, Mr. Chan. I see I'm mistaken. May I see Philip? I needn't tell you, Diana, that Philip is in really a desperate predicament. And a few words of explanation at this time would be of great help to him. Get him to talk. I'll try. Dig in. Yes, sir. Have Nash sent into the ante room at once. At once, sir. In here, Diana. Thank you. Now we'll hear what he has to say. Five minutes, Miss Woodland. Diana. Well, you shouldn't have come here. But I had to, Philip. Haven't you anything you can say that will clear up this terrible misunderstanding? There's nothing to be said. What I've done, I've done. If I have to stay here, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But surely there's something you can say. Sorry, gentlemen. I see, Nash. I'll have the motor going in a second. Get over there, all of you. Only a foolish dog pursue flying bird. The young upstart. Take it! Take it! Imagine a girl like Miss Woodland trying to help a would-be murderer to escape from prison. There's no question, Mr. Chan. He's the man we are looking for. The innocent man does not run away. Yes, sir. What's happened? Take him. Send out every available man. Search the settlement, the whole city if necessary. Find him. Bring him back. Mr. Nash, sir, has he escaped? Has he escaped? Of course he's escaped. What do you think? Yes, sir. Lee. Lee.
Oh, go on. I'm lying here to hey, Pop, come. tell these mugs to lay off me, will you? We caught him as he was coming through the fire escape. Good man, come with you up there. Come, come, come. Uh, clothes of disrupted beggar, concealed dearly beloved son. Now, wait a minute before you ball me out, Pop. I was on my way back here when I saw the taxi driver that knocked me out. You follow? I'll say I did. He went into a cheap joint on the waterfront, the Versailles Cafe. Did not notify police? Of course I didn't. I beat it back here to tell you. That is good. <laughs> Hello? Yes, sir. It's Mr. Andrews. Charlie Jan speaking. Get over here just as quickly as you can. I think we've cracked this case wide open. We'll make immediate haste. What's the matter? Has something happened? Can I go with you? Only little time to talk. Have important business for you. Must act quickly. Okay, Pop. So sorry for delay. Caught in traffic. In the study, Mr. Chan. Most happy to renew acquaintance. Gentlemen who make abduction. Oh, so he's one of them, is he? I caught him going through my papers. Now then, you're going to talk. Where's Marlowe? I don't know any Marlowe. Come on, where's Marlowe? I'm telling you, I don't know. Well, we'll see about that. Now then, are you going to talk? Yeah, I'll talk. I'll tell you. He's at the Versailles Cafe. Ever hear of that place? Can easily find. Fifty-three. Reporting on secret assignment file 457M. Have a squad of men surround the Versailles Cafe. Keep them in reserve until something breaks. Right. It'll be foolish for us to move in on that mob alone. One man cannot move a mountain, you know. <laughs> but two men can start digging. Keep your eye on that fellow. If he gives you any trouble, call the police. Quite right, sir. You ready? As Sun Lee would say, let's go. Say, he liked to knock my teeth out. You won't have a chance to get even when they walk into that nice reception at the Versailles Cafe. Come on. Certainly knows the stuff, doesn't she? They're trained, these dancers, since childhood. See what it says here in the guidebook? Yeah. You read it.
right down those stairs. Where did you find him? Snooping around upstairs. You're Marlock, aren't you? Yes. I'm in a jam. The police are after me, and I've got to get away from Shanghai. Listen, Marlow, you've got a boat out there in the river, and I want to go on it to America. You know a lot, don't you? I know you're in a spot if you don't get out of Shanghai tonight. I can tell you every move Charlie Chan has planned. That ought to be worth something. Sure it ought to. Not here, you fool. You want the crowd upstairs to find out what they were doing down here? Listen, you spy. That break of yours from jail was just a trick. Arranged by your friend Charlie Chen. And we've just been waiting for you. Sure. We'll take you to America. They're on their way now. Fine. Now you go upstairs and let them see you. And when they follow you down here, we'll be ready for them. Okay. Get the stuff below. What about this guy? We'll take him with us. When we get out to sea, we'll drop them overboard. Sarsaparilla. No kitchen. I'm afraid you'd better follow a bad example. Scotch, too. Chop, chop. You don't have to drink it, you know. Bottle of whiskey and two glasses. Taxi driver who assists in abduction. Too late, Mr. Chan. Careful. Remember, you never drink anything stronger than tea. The appearance is sometimes deceiving, like a uh, wolf in lamb's clothing. Oh, so that's it. Shipping it in wine cases. Shipping place not far off. River runs nearby. Which means they have a way of getting to the water. Very clever deduction. Trap door. Possibly leads to river. Right again. Is that a flashlight? Throw it down there. See? A loaded boat at the dock. Nobody around it. Let's investigate. All right, Mr. Chan. You go ahead with the light, and we'll signal my men from down below, and then we'll run the boat around to the government dock.
greatly admire efficiency of demon. Yeah. Insignificant offspring of such light seems to have internal trouble. Let me have it. That's all right. Motorboat. Must be police you telephoned for to surround the place. Keep him down there. Charlie, but we got here. Sorry, I couldn't have been of more help, Mr. Chan. But Marlowe saw through our jailbreak scheme. <laughs> Thank you so much for able assistance already rendered. Where? What's Forrest doing here? No one knows less about servants than the master. Forrest, one of gang. He made attempt on my life in your apartment. Escaped through window and appear to have just entered by door. Well, I can believe that now. Well, what about Nash's fingerprints on the gun? Marlow, uh, think young man know too much because of position with Sir Stanley. So use a fake fingerprint on gun to create impression he tried to kill me. Rubber stamp pad in fireplace at kidnap house with the uh, sample fingerprints on paper. <laughs> Very clever device. Then Marloff was also responsible for the concealed gun that killed Sir Stanley at the banquet. And it was one of his gang who tried to get you at your hotel. Very probable. Mr. Chan, you deserve the thanks of the United States government for the help that you've been on this case. Believe government owe you debt also. Without able guidance, could never have located storehouse of opium. <laughs> we'll share that honor, Mr. Chan. I'll be very happy to assist in taking charge of these men. I'll remove them to the government dock in their own boat. Certainly. I'd appreciate it. Our police boat is very small. All right, take these men below. Uh, pardon, please. One more prisoner to be accounted for. Who's that? Real head of dope smuggling ring. Reach for ceiling. <laughs> Let's have our laugh later. After this business is finished. Come on, get started. Put up your hands. Take gun away from gentlemen, please. Hey, Pop! Here's your wire photo of Andrews and a cable from Washington. That man isn't Mr. Andrews. Hmm. Read the uh, cablegram, please. Andrews, Bureau of Investigation, Agent 53, assigned to opium smuggling detail in Shanghai, murdered in San Francisco three weeks ago. Murdered, not apprehended. Uh, corroboration of evidence, most gratifying. <laughs> you pretend to be G-Man. Now turn out to be N-G-Man. Hmm? Young Mr. Nash, when going through Sir Stanley's private correspondence from Department of Justice at Washington, discover that real Mr. Andrews did not smoke or drink. When you come to reclaim private letter of Sir Stanley, to real Mr. Andrews, you make smart guess about secret writing, but very foolish to accept scotch and cigarette. Also foolish to fake telephone call for police. Fortunately, humble self took precaution to notify same. You very clever though. Thank you. You're welcome. Gave you plenty of rope. You make excellent news for Nick. Now we go in boat to government dock. Suggest you go to young lady. We'll find her waiting at home. <laughs> Charlie, you're all right. Thank you so much. Go home. Okay now for one female telephone call. Thank you so much. 